All right, hello, doers. My name is Jose Ignacio. Now let's get cracking at manufacturing. All right, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm really excited to show you all of the fun things Odoo MRP has to offer for your manufacturing business. But as always, first things first, let's start with the basic. Now, the Bill of Materials, or BOM for my acronym lovers, is a crucial manufacturing document that lists all of the components and the assembly instructions and operations that go into making a product. Basically, it's your recipe for whatever you're trying to produce, complete with a list of ingredients and instructions if we're talking about like something Gordon Ramsay related. Now, inside of this video, I will show you how to build a Bill of Materials from scratch. You know, you don't actually have to do anything here. And I will also show you how to add assembly instructions for your line workers. Now, in other videos, I'm going to cover more manufacturing basics, like work center setup and how to manage manufacturing orders. I've already linked a few of those in the description below in the video. So be sure to check those out, O-Doers. All right, enough talk, enough chit chat. Let's jump into our database and bombs away. All right, welcome back, O-Doers. Now, the first thing we need to do is check out the products that we want to make a bill of materials for. So where do we go? Well, we're going to go to products and over here in the products and right away you can see a product called the kitchen cart. Now, this is something that I've set up for us ahead of time because I like to leave you surprises. Now, let's take a look at it. So we're actually going to click into it. Now, here, as you can see, I've already configured some basic information, just, you know, the most important things here. Now, most importantly, though, we actually want to go over here into the inventory tab. And why are we here? And it's just to make sure that the manufacturer route is selected since we'll be manufacturing this product ourselves. So now to create a bomb for this product, I can actually click on this little bill of material smart button that we have up here. Now, this will take me to the bomb template. And what is the bomb template? Now here, oh, do lets me actually create a few different things. Well, it lets me create as many bombs for this product as I want. So I'm actually not limited to one. And this is actually very useful in providing more flexibility around the product's design itself. So we're going to make one. Now, as you notice, I can also create and view bombs from the products menu at the top, which I'll do now just to show you how. Now, as you can see, here's a list of all of my bombs here. Now, I want to create a new bomb for the kitchen cart. So again, we're going to hit new. And then we're going to set the kitchen cart as the product. Now, we need a reference code here. Um, in our case, we're just going to leave that blank, though. It's kind of mostly useful, especially if I have multiple versions of a product. In our case, I just have the one that I'm trying to make. So we don't need that. Now, I also have the option, as you notice, to designate a specific product variant. But this will be the focus of another tutorial video as well. So we're also going to leave that blank. Now I have this bomb type set to manufacture this product. Now this is a default configuration for bombs in Odoo. And it indicates that the product simply needs to be manufactured in-house. Now for our instance, we're going to leave that also as is. Don't touch it. All right. Now I already have my components set up as products in our inventory. Now, to add those components to this bomb, I'll simply click Add a Line. And then I need to add my materials and their respective quantities. In our case, what do we want? Well, we need a steel top. We need legs. And how many legs does a table have, oh, doers? Or a card in this case? It has four. And we need casters because it is a cart, not a table. God, Jose Ignacio. So we also need four wheels or casters in this case. Now, another cool feature, actually, and this is something really cool, is that I can change the components units of measure directly from the bomb, as long as it's in the same units of measure category, such as units and dozens or centimeters and meters. And that's a pretty cool Jose quick tip for you over here. Now, to do this, you actually need to have units of measure activated from the inventory app setting. So make sure to do that first. Also note, changing this value on this bomb will actually only affect this bill of material, not the components product template. 
So keep that in mind if you actually wanted to change something specific. This only changes this bob, okay? All right, now, up next, I need to specify the instructions for building this product, which in our case are called work order operations in Odoo, or woo. No, actually it is woo, because it is W-O-O. -O. So we'll go to configuration settings and make sure that woo is activated. In our case, work orders. Now, I'm going to explain work order dependencies later on, so I'll make sure that it's also activated at this time. We're just going through these, and now I'm even more excited. Now, since we made changes to the settings page, we'll make sure to click the save before exiting the page. I know I usually say that it saves auto, but please, please save. Always save. All right, cool. Now let's go back to our bomb, go on to products, build materials. And now we can work on our operation inside of this tab. All right. Now we're finally cooking. And now we're actually going to create a new operation for this product by adding a line. Now we need to name this operation. So let's call this assemble legs and top. All right. <laughs> I'm really good at making up these names, as you can tell. Now, next, we need to choose where the work operation will take place. We are going to be assembling this at assembly line one. So let's select that from the work center dropdown. Now, if we want to apply this operation only to a specific variant, we can select that here, over here on the variant, or apply on variant. Now, so, so we don't have any variants for this table, you want to leave that blank. Only use that if you have variant. Now, next, the duration computation needs to be set. We can choose to compute based on track time. Notice here we can adjust how many previous work orders on this is based on. Now in our case, we're gonna put 10 for last 10 work orders. Now in this situation, we are going to choose set the duration manually. Now for this assembly, the time should be, I don't know, 45 minutes, go with it. So we'll adjust that time. Now last, we can add work instructions for our assembler in the worksheet tab below. Now, you'll notice we have a few options, and this is what I really like about Odoo. We can attach a PDF, a Google slide, or we can simply type in some instructions. We have all of those options. We're not limiting you. In our case, since I have an amazing marketing team and designers, we have kitchen cart instructions as a PDF already. Now, I don't know about you, but this all looks really good. So I'm going to save it and we're going to save and close. All right. That was one operation. As you guessed it, now we need to add another assembly instruction to this product. We need, what do we need to do actually? Well, we've put the legs, but now we need to put casters onto those legs or else we only have a table. Now, if I have products with similar operations, I can simply copy existing operations over here to save time. Now, you're probably asking yourself, how do we copy it? Well, to copy an operation, all I have to do is click here. Just copy operation. And this takes me to a list of all available operations. Now, I'm going to select the operation that I want to copy. Here, I'll actually choose the assemble casters operation. And this is just for the carts. Since it's pretty similar to what we just did, it's putting stuff onto that deal. Now, I simply have to click copy selected operations. All right. Cool. I am actually really happy that this is all going very smoothly. Now, when I go back to the operations tab, what do we see over here? I'll see that assemble casters has been copied over. Now, since I want to edit this operation a little, because it's technically not fully there, I'll click on the template. Now here, I'll change the work center to assembly line two, which is where production for this operation will take place. Then, once that I'm actually done here, I'll change the default duration to, I'm gonna give them 15 minutes of work in this case. Aren't we amazing? And that's how long it will take to assemble. Now next, I need to add some instructions. Here, I'm going to add some text instructions this time instead of a PDF. So, we're going to do using torque wrench, attach swivel caster. And we're gonna paste all of this from our clipboard. Sorry, Odoers, I had to find the right one. Now this looks good now, so what am I gonna do, Odoers? Am I gonna move forward? No, we're gonna save. Always save yourself. Now, notice that if we look at the total duration time, and this is actually something really cool. 
we can see that this product will now take 60 minutes to assemble. Why? Because basic math is why. 45 minutes plus the other operations 15 minutes get added. Ah, it did it automatically and that's beautiful. That's always beautiful. Now, for bill of materials with multiple operations or steps, Odoo lets you create dependencies that indicate which steps should be completed first. Earlier, we activated work order dependencies from the settings menu. So now we need to go to the miscellaneous tab. And we need to check the box next to operation dependencies at the bottom. Now I'm going to click on the cloud button next to the breadcrumbs to save this manually. And I always mention that because that is how you save manually. Now let's see how these dependencies work. So let's go back to our operations tab. I have two operations here that are needed to be performed. If I need to, I can drag my operations using these arrows to make sure they're ordered correctly. We don't want people assembling this upside down and calling us really mad. Now, these were already in the right order because I am perfect, so I'll easily switch them back. Now, let's say I want to make, what do I want to make, Odoers? Let's say that I want to make the assemble stainless steel top and legs operation mandatory before I can start on assemble casters. I actually just click on assemble casters and then next to the blocked by field, I'll choose assemble stainless steel top and legs from the drop down. Sorry, that is a very big phrase right there and I can't give you an acronym for that one. Now, assemble casters can't be started before assemble stainless steel top and legs is finished. So now that that's all set, let's click save. Sorry for the mouthful. No acronyms for that one. Now, if the block by column is hidden inside of the operations tab, and this is very important in this case, I can click on the additional options icon, which are the two dots, and we can click on block by, and then that'll give you some more information right there. And that kind of will always show you what you need to see. Now, the very last thing I need to do and this is just on my bomb, is to indicate exactly when I want my components to be consumed. Now this way, I will know when parts are used and when they will be removed from inventory. Now for more complicated products with very large time consuming bombs, this is extremely important for accurate inventory counts and just to know when the manufacturing orders will be completed. Now this helps my purchasing team know when to order more components and it helps my sales team know when manufactured products will be available to ship to customers. Now to set this up, we got to go back over here to the components tab. Then I need to assign operations to each component, which I can actually do under the consumed and operation column. If it isn't immediately visible, check the additional options menu, as you can see over here on the far right with this little icon. It's very small, you might miss it. Now let me assign the operation during which my components should be consumed. Now once we get that all set up under consumed, and assigning these ones. Awesome. Now we have our bomb fully set up. Now, if I want, let's say, any more detailed information about costs for this product, I can just click on this overview smart button in the upper right, which will give me a full report of all the material and operational costs for this product. Now, this overview report provides a ton of helpful information from the components used, operations, availability, lead times, and even how we obtain products who are on, you know, their other components, and so much more. Honestly, the list goes on, but I am getting lightheaded. Now in the top right-hand corner, Odoo shows us how many finished items we have on hand, as you can see over here with the free to use, and when the next expected item will be available based on the current and forecasted stock. Now the report also shows component availability, current stock levels, lead times, and routes, giving us a very complete picture of all of our available inventory in one place. All right, I am winded, and hopefully you are eating something while watching this, because now you know how to create a bill of materials in just a few steps. And you can also build operational flows that include instructions for your assembly line. Now, I hope you'll join us in future videos where I'm going to cover more awesome Odoo stuff. Now that's it for now. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video, bro doers.